Mihai Munkácsi was a Hungarian painter who fought his way up from a carpenter's apprentice to an internationally renowned artist and conquered the world with his canvases of great proportions and realistic genre. He was born Mihai Lieb on February 20th, 1844 in Munkács, a town in the Kingdom of Hungary, now part of Ukraine. He lost both his parents at a young age, so in 1852 he moved to Békés Csaba to live with his maternal uncle. Here he studied carpentry. Later he moved to Arad where he worked as a carpenter's apprentice. At the age of 15 he caught syphilis. The disease, for which there was no effective cure at the time, affected his whole life and eventually caused his mental deterioration and led to his ultimate death. Because of his illness, he returned to his uncle's town. Here he started drawing during his recovery and then learned the basics of visual arts from a painter named Alex Samoshi. At the age of 19, he painted his first oil painting, Reading of a Letter, which earned him the recognition of the Fine Arts Society. In 1863, Mungachi moved to Pest, where he met Antal Ligeti, a landscape painter and head of the gallery of the Hungarian National Museum, who guided him and let him copy artwork at the museum. Later, Ligeti had Munkácsi get a state grant to study abroad. Munkácsi studied at various academies in Vienna, Munich and Düsseldorf, where he learned from prominent painters such as Karl Rahl and Ludwig Knaus. His artistic style was influenced by the realism and naturalism of Gustave Courbet, whom he greatly admired. At early stage in his career, Munkachi painted mainly scenes from the daily lives of peasants and poor people. Besides Courbet, he was also inspired by contemporary Hungarian genre painters such as Károly Lotz and Janos Janko. His works Cauldron and Easter Merrymaking were painted in these years. He also created Storm Over the Plains during this time. In 
In 1868, he changed his name from Leap to Munkachi. In the following year, he painted Yawning Butler. The detailed study of the servant's face, which presented him with a complex anatomical challenge, is a more significant work than the full-figured final image itself. By creating the painting, Munkachi found his unique voice, which set him apart from his mentors. The 26-year-old artist became famous overnight with his painting The Last Day of a Condemned Man, which was awarded the gold medal at the 1870 Paris Salon. The painting depicts the emotional turmoil of a man who is about to be executed, surrounded by his friends, family and the priest. In 1872, Munkachi moved to Paris with his friend Laszlo Pal, a landscape painter. He continued to paint scenes from the lives of peasants and simple people. The works he created in the 1870s, such as Making Lind, Night Wanderers, Churning Woman and Woman Carrying Brushwood, were the zenith in his career as a realist painter. In 1874, Moncacci married Cécile Papier, a wealthy widow, who supported his artistic career and introduced him to high society. The marriage resulted in a radical change in his work. His style evolved from the typical subjects of realism to the more colorful and joyful salon paintings and still lives. His sumptuous new home in Paris on Avenue de Villiers was the scene of elegant soirees attended by prominent figures from the worlds of art, literature and music. The couple spent their summers in Colpac Castle in western Luxembourg. In 1886, Franz Liszt visited them here shortly before his death. In 1877, Moncachi painted The Blind Milton Dictating Paradise Lost to his daughters. This painting illustrates the English poet John Milton, who lost his sight in his later years and dictated his epic poem to his daughters. It depicts the serene and intimate atmosphere of the room and is known for its attention to detail. The 
painting was purchased and subsequently resold by the American art dealer Charles Sedelmeyer. He then offered Munkachi a 10-year contract that not only made him wealthy, but also an established member of the Paris art world. Between 1878 and 1887, Munkachi painted salon pictures, giving an insight into the intimate life of upper-class Parisians at leisure. He also painted realist portraits of famous people, for example that of Franz Liszt and of Cardinal Hainold. In the late 1870s, Munkachi worked in Barbizon in north-central France and painted landscapes such as In the Barbizon Woods and Dusty Road. His painter friend Laszlo Pal also settled in the same area and his influence on Munkachi's landscapes painted during this time is evident. Sedermeyer commissioned Munkachi to create large-scale paintings with their subject taken from the Bible. This is how the Christ trilogy came to life. The first of the series, Christ Before Pilate, portrays the trial of Jesus by Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. It captures the tension and drama of the scene, with a large crowd of people and a richly decorated hall. The series' second painting is Golgotha, depicting the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and is considered one of Munkachi's most famous works. He completed the trilogy with Ecce Homo, where Pilate and Jesus are standing side by side for the last time at the scene of the sentencing. At this time, Munkachi's health was deteriorating, so he could fully identify with the man sentenced to death and torture. Towards the end of his career, Munkachi painted two monumental works. The first, the 100 square meter fresco of the Apotheosis of the Renaissance for the ceiling of the Kunsthistorisches Museum in Vienna. After its completion, the artist received a long-awaited task from Hungary to paint the Hungarian conquest for the Houses of Parliament in Budapest. In 1891, Munkachi began working on the piece which he completed in a year and a half. 
The tour preceded the work, during which the artist and his secretary collected authentic props, original costumes, and photographed anatomical types of Hungarian and Slavic heritage. Today, the Hungarian Conquest, which is the most monumental oil painting of the Hungarian Parliament, decorates the Munkácsi Hall, named after the artist and used for representational purposes. Munkácsi's mental and physical health sharply deteriorated in the 1890s. His depression grew into a severe mental illness which was probably intensified by the syphilis he had contracted in his youth. After treatment in Baden-Baden, he retired to Kolpak and Paris. Later he was taken to a mental hospital in Endenich, Germany, where he died in 1900. He was buried in Budapest, where he is regarded as one of the greatest Hungarian painters of all time.